I am so very excited to see what decks these four players come out with. Again, knowing that Renan and Surge have had so much success with the Royal Giant deck, you'd think that they're going to very much shy away from it, knowing that Aukrap and the God RF will set up for that and will counter it. We will certainly see what these boys have in store in 2v2. Log cycle to start the game. We did see uh, open up the day with that nice counter played with the uh, the Skelly Bell Graveyard deck up against Lava. It's always frustrating when you go to cycle a log or your opponent goes to cycle a log and you drop something right into it. Lightning comes in early, takes that baby dragon down. Lumberjack does get on tower. It's a big opening lead here for Pain Gaming. Yeah, you can see that Ockcrap and the God RF were not happy with how that went. And again, the relentless push. Lumberjack up front meets another Lumberjack. That will rage up this RG to get at least two shots in. That's a huge opening minute for Pain Gaming out to a massive over 1,000 HP lead. And look at that Ice Spirit. Just value on value on value. A two elixir lead by Pain Gaming at the moment. It's been all defense out of Immortals so far to open this day. Looking to hopefully get into the offensive half of the field. Lava Hound comes down. Ah crap and RF haven't played Lava Hound, I don't believe, yet this season. No, I do not believe so. Inferno Tower up high for Pain. Should it completely negate that Lava Hound? That raged up Mega Minion is getting a ton of value. And another Royal Giant coming in. And here is the question that Ockrap and the God RF have to be asking themselves is, how on earth do I keep up with this relentless push from Pain and actually create a counter push? And here is that counter push we're talking about. Ice Spirit just barely saves from that Dark Knight, or Dark Prince getting a shot at the tower. Does do some damage to the Ice Wizard in the back, but a nice returning blow from Immortals. Yeah, that Ice Spirit being played up high in the center of the, their side of the map. Pain has continued to distract the Dark Prince is coming across the river. And at some moment, you got to wonder if Immortals is going to try and predict it. But if you predict and miss, it's a huge waste of Elixir on a one Elixir card. That NATO play just hasn't quite done the job on the Royal Giant yet. It's been Pain Gaming doing excellent choices, excellent work to clean out the defensive troops and get just enough room for those Royal Giant shots. Lightning comes down. Game number one goes to the Brazilians. That is now three games in a row that Aukrap and the God RF have fallen short. And again, Renan, Kava, and Surge TS just doing work with the Royal Giants in 2v2. Their rotation with it is unbelievable, unmatched. The synergy they have is just so impressive. It's not just three games, Andrew, going back to their loss against Liquid as well. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. I mean, you look at people that are idolized as 2v2 All-Stars, really, really struggling to find their rhythm this season. Ice Wiz slows down the Dark Prince, but not enough to stop from getting on tower. Oh crap, leaking a few Elixir, trying to, or a couple Elixir, trying to figure out where he wants to go. Royal Giant comes in again for Pain. Much cleaner defense this time on the Royal Giant push. And now that they have the giant skeleton in their hands or in their decks, it's going to help a lot with these pushes that are coming in. Miner picked up very easily by the Lumberjack. Great timing there with the Lumberjack and Royal Giant once again. There you go. This was yes. much better NATO play, and also a much better job of of keeping their support, their defensive troops alive to actually chunk down that Royal Giant when it gets across. Stark Prince connects to the tower, and you called it perfectly. I mean, the lightning, or excuse me, the NATO came in just a second later and was played a little bit higher, and it completely mitigated all the damage coming in from that Royal Giant, which is, as you saw in the last game, it was something they just could not figure out. 
Another easy pickup. Yeah, last game, you know, the, the hard part was that they would play the Inferno on Run Royal Giant and they get beat by the second one. This time it seems that they have a better plan to deal with the second one when it comes down. Yeah, and this is this is where you got you think that, okay, they're just gonna keep playing Royal Giant. Why wouldn't they? They've been almost flawless with it. We've gotta counter it. We've gotta counter it hard. So we've got NATO, we've got Snowball, we've got Log, Inferno Tower, the Giant Skeleton there to clean up the DPS troops, and a great, Whoa. great big bomb there from the Giant Skeleton to take out that Lumberjack. That was really fortuitous timing, and you saw uh, Ah Crap kind of nod at himself when he uh, over the last defensive sequence and then getting very, very nice uh, a sequence of events there with the giant skeleton bomb taking out that lumberjack, not having to deal with it with any more elixir. Yeah, missing a little bit of their poison value there just because the baby dragon was raged up from pain, but still getting some chip damage on that tower and taking out the ice wizard. Fireball comes in. You think with the pre-fireball, they might send the miner inside to pick up any troops that were gonna pick up the miner and hit the inferno tower, but you know, not the end of the world. This RG handily dealt with, although Immortals has to be careful. They are pretty low on Elixir right now compared to their opponents. Miner comes in again. Poison down, great poison value there. That should even up their Elixir. And there you go, Miner to the number three spot on the inside, getting a lot of swings, Ice Spirit to help. Fireball comes in, down to 541. Immortals in a great spot as we enter Sudden Death Overtime. And now a team that looked like they just didn't have it together in the first game is making Pain Gaming look like they don't know what's happening here in the second. Double Royal Giant push, kind of a desperation move it seems from Pain. And pretty easily cleaned up. One shot comes in, rocket down. We just need a log to send this one to game number three. Snowball will do too. <laughs> <laughs> We're all tied up. And there you have Aw Crap and the God RF making a huge adjustment in game number two to push this to the last game of our first set. This is a big one, of course. Like I said before, Andrew, I believe these two squads are gonna go all the way to the to the one v one set to our third and final set. But of course, a win here would make them feel a lot better. Yeah, and that adjustment that they made, I, I really loved it. They they went back to kind of a minor spell cycle deck, which is honestly a deck that we thought we were gonna see a lot more here in two v two, but really has only been played maybe three or four times. And then you have the defensive adjustment, being able to, to recover from the Royal Giant encountering the first Inferno Tower, the only Inferno Tower, and being able to still pick up the second Royal Giant. Yeah, doing a much better job with their tornadoes in that last game, really kind of dropping them a little bit later and a little bit higher up, allowing for the maximum damage to come in on the RG. Graveyard Freeze comes in with a giant skeleton, and they ate a fair bit of damage, but prevented a, what could have been much worse you can see AC a little bit frustrated with that situation. Yeah, and Pain Gaming allowing the Musketeer to get through from Immortals, taking two shots on that right tower, kind of narrowing the gap just a little. Second Graveyard down for Pain. And those units are both freezable with the Princess Tower, but Freeze not in hand or just not wanting to pull the trigger. Well, looking at what I think that Surge's deck has played so far, Freeze probably still not back in cycle as the fourth card play. Yep, just not sure if Pennant Kava has it or not. The double graveyard, very aggressive now. And again, notice how they're not dropping them at the same time. They're cycling them. And a NATO on King Tower there. Uh, maybe, and you can see, ah, crap, hands on his forehead. That was definitely a misplay. Heading to double elixir time at the moment. It's Pain in control of the action. Giant skeletons both dropped in the back. Musketeer behind the giant skeleton. Fireball in, very well-timed fireball. Musketeer does survive. Mega Minion in, Baby Dragon dropped just in time to defend. Very, very nice play there by Immortals. And now you see Log down, raged up gold, uh, Royal Giant. Lightning comes in, cleans up those troops. But that Royal Giant is not gonna break through and a nice Log to get some chip on the tower as well. 
and you can see just not much to in, in cycle to deal with this last graveyard push. Down to 575 as the left hand tower of Immortals. And one big skeleton hit did come in on that last graveyard push. And the naked graveyard, you can assume a freeze will most likely come down. Instead, they go for the poison, getting a lot of value. And then the freeze. That is going to do it. Very, very nice timing from Pain Gaming. They take 2v2. We're headed to King of the Hill. You see the frustration on Ocraft's face there. Just things not going their way. Well, right from the beginning, they fell behind just a little bit. And Pain Gaming just took advantage and kept the pressure on. And you